Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Dream Big Today Bible Study. My name's Debbie, and this is November 16th, 2022. It is a wonderful Wednesday, and it's it's chilly, and, and you know what? It's just a sign that the, the holiday seasons are right around the corner. And so we always, you know, we always just enjoy this time, and, and it's you know, I, I got out and walked yesterday with a coat on and my gloves and my my hat on just to stay warm. It was just a little chilly. And so today, today will be the same way, that's for sure. Good morning, Rita. Glad you're on with me this morning. And so I want to start out. Uh, hi, Debbie. I want to start out just for a second in my devotion because it ties into today's reading. And if, if you're new to us, we use the one year Bible, the New Living Translation. And this is every day, uh, 365 days. And in fact, I didn't write my number down today, but but it it's I mean, this is November. This is the middle of November. We've got a month and a half left. And so it's, it's, it's always like another feel good moment whenever you've read through God's word one more time. And so we look forward to turning the page back to the beginning next year, January 1st and starting it again. And so put your praise request, praise request, praise reports. My goodness, I've, I've got a lot of things going on today. Put your praise reports in for us so we can share that with you and, and your prayer request. There we go. I got it. I got it that time. You know, the, and, and God is interested in every single part of your life. Everything is important and there is no small prayer request. And so I'm going to therapy here in a little bit, to, you know, for my normal physical therapy and and then I have a doctor's appointment this afternoon to see how everything's going. Good morning, Christy and Tanya and Holly. Man, this is awesome. And yes, uh, somebody just put in unspoken prayers. And you know what? That's perfect, too, because God knows we as intercessors praying together corporately can just pray for your unspoken prayer. You don't have to spill it all out if you don't want to. You know, you can. But, you know, I would I would make sure that it is it is about you and not not your neighbor and all of their stuff. Yeah, that probably wouldn't go over real well. So anyway, let me get started on my devotion today, because like I say, it start it's it is part of our what we're going to be talking about. And it and it's talking about I am so grateful. Jesus, that you are my shepherd kind of tags along to. Uh, Psalms 23, as well as Ezekiel today, you're always vigilant and you know exactly what is on the path ahead of me. See, he knows, he knows what is going to be happening throughout your whole day. <coughs> Excuse me. So pray to him and thank him for already having your day lined out and that you're aware of where he wants you to go. It says, you anticipate perilous situations and prepare me for them. Because you're a masterful shepherd, you can shield me from danger so skillfully that I remain blissfully aware of it. Moreover, you are totally trustworthy and only absolutely, the only absolutely good shepherd. As I seek to follow you and your ways, I thank you for protecting me from both danger and fear. Isn't that awesome? He, if we started out every day knowing and, and just thanking him for being our good shepherd that just guarded us and from things that we didn't even know was would have hit us otherwise, but how would that change your day? I mean, that, I think that's I think that's absolutely awesome. So Let's get in this. And if you're, and again, if you're new, like this page and subscribe to it and share it with your friends. And it's, it's really fun to have your friends on the same Bible study that you're on. So let's get started. And we're doing Ezekiel 33 and 34. 
Now, this is chapters 33 and 34. Oh, and this, this is changing up if you've noticed it because we've been reading doom and gloom. I mean, Ezekiel has been telling them over and over and over, quit doing that. Stop, get rid of those idols. We only have one God. Follow him, believe in him, and all of that kind of stuff. And it's and the poor man has just beat beat himself to death. Can you just imagine God telling Ezekiel what to say to them? And then he tells them and, and they don't change. It can I can just imagine Ezekiel going over to a, a a big rock and just hitting his head on it over and over and over because these people aren't even paying attention. But now then we get into this segment. Of, of Ezekiel, and we are going into messages of hope. So this is a different direction for his prophecies. Um, he's reminded here that he's the nation's watchman. As we get on into this, well, let's just start. Uh, the message came to the Lord, son of man, Give your people this message. And, you know, Ezekiel doesn't know ahead of time what, what it's going to be. He's probably thinking, man, it's going to be more, more warnings and stuff. And they haven't listened to anything. And now here we go again. And the Lord says, when I bring an army against a country, the people of that land choose one of their own to be a watchman. When the watchman sees the enemy coming, he sounds the alarm to warn the people. And so to, throughout this reading, whenever you go back and read it today, or if you've already read it, reread it and pay attention to the warnings and the promises that's in this. Those who rebel should take warning. Those who are faithful to God find encouragement and hope. That's what we want to find today. Because you know what, it, it, throughout this time and all the doom and gloom that's going on, you know, if you just if you focus on the bad stuff all the time and you're not in the word, it's going to be pretty bleak. But when you get into God's word and you start reading this, oh my goodness, it changes. You can see, you can see how these people were, were so disobedient and how they just, God kept he was there all the time talking to them. And so in Ezekiel, when we, if we flipped back to Ezekiel 3, 16 through 27, that's when God first said, talked to Ezekiel about being a watchman. And so today's role, we, today's role, we're watchmen. And that means to have a perceptive spiritual eyes through prayer. Perceptive, wow, spiritual eyes through prayer. Because you're going to be the one to sound the alarm. What, whatever, whatever the Holy Spirit dropped in on your heart, then you, you'll, be, you'll be speaking of that. Um, then we go to... Uh, we're still talking about warnings. And in verse seven, it says, now, son of man, I'm making you a watchman for all of the people of Israel. He didn't say for the remnant or for anybody specifically. He said for everybody there. Therefore, listen to what I say and warn them. If I announce that some wicked people are sure to die and you fail to tell them to change their ways, then they will die in their sins and I will hold you responsible for their deaths. But if you warn them to repent and they don't repent, then they will die in their sins and you will have saved yourself. See, and that, that just shows me that, you know, we're not the ones and, and we know this. We don't save people. We, we plant the seeds and we share the word. And, and then it's up to them to make that choice. So on down to verse 11, 
It says, as surely as I live, says the sovereign Lord, I take no pleasure in the death of wicked people. I only want them to turn from their wicked ways so they can live. Turn, turn from your wickedness, O people of Israel. Why should you die? For the first time, they admit their own guilt as the cause for their suffering. But is this confession of repentance? In view of the prophet's response, it seems to be little more than a cry of pain. See, you can, you can be sorry you got caught and not be repentant. You can, you can have your feelings hurt because your feelings change all the time. Um, so then, son of man, give your people this message. The righteous behavior, the righteous people will not save them if they turn to sin, nor will the wicked behavior of wicked people destroy them if they repent and turn from their sins. Focus on that a little bit today. That sounds like a tongue twister, but you know what? We're not saved by our works. If it, we're, we're saved because of Jesus, we have to take that step. We got to, we got to confess. God reminded all that every righteous man could end up with a life dominated by his transgression. His prior righteousness would not rescue him on the day of God's judgment. So as it goes on, then God tells them, I mean, I went through and I underlined every time God said, I will. I love that because those are promises. Um, on, in verse 21 and 22, I'm going to go to 22. The previous evening, the Lord had taken hold of me and given me back my voice. So I was able to speak when this man arrived the next morning. See, I forgot that. Ezekiel didn't speak until the Lord told him to get, you know, gave him a message. And you'll see in uh, verse or chapter 3, 26 through 27 of Ezekiel, whenever he first caused him not to be able to speak until he had a message to give. And and, you know, that that just, you know, kind of is cool because every time he spoke, people were going to listen. He wasn't just doing idle chatter at all. Every word that man spoke was a word from God. And he he ends a lot of his uh, messages by saying, then they will know I am the Lord. Because, see, they just kept they didn't recognize that they refused to recognize that however you want to say it they just didn't do it um, and he reminds them all through this that i am the lord then they will know i am the lord in chapter 34 again this came uh, this message came to me from the lord tell them tell them and he's talking about it and comparing them to shepherds uh, the leaders of Israel, give them this message. What sorrow awaits you shepherds who feed yourselves instead of your flocks? Shouldn't shepherds feed their own sheep? It talks about what they do to them. They, your, the flocks starve. They don't take care of the weak or the sick. And they don't go after the lost. This is a greed of the unfaithful shepherds or leaders. <clears throat> And the results is the sheep are scattered. That's why as, as leaders or teachers, we've got a big responsibility to make sure we're speaking the truth. Don't let the, don't let the, uh, like, you know, black and white words turn gray to where whatever you get used to is normal and is okay. Because we got to get back into the Bible and see what is what God says. What does God say? It, it isn't what the Supreme Court says. It does, isn't what your, your local government says. It's what God says. That's what we are responsible to obey. <clears throat> 
so as it goes on to more, uh, God's got promises in here for them. Uh, he says in verse 10, I will, I now consider these shepherds my enemies and I will hold them responsible. So it made me think through whether you're happy or not through the elections. Look at this. He will hold leaders responsible. I will take away the right to feed the flock. I will stop them from feeding themselves. I will rescue my flock out of their mouths. I mean, you can just turn that to, to just know that whatever is going on in the world today, God's got it under control. He, it may not be what we think it ought to be right now, but you know what? This, this is what is going to, that's, this is his promises in, in taking care of his flock. And so then he says, I will be like a shepherd looking for the scattered flock. I will find my sheep. I will, I will bring them home. I will feed them. I will give them good pasture. I will tend my sheep and give them a place to lie down. I will, in verse 16, listen to this. I will search for my lost ones who strayed away and I will bring them home safely again. I will search for that one. I may have 99 out here in the, on, the, on the hill, but I will find that one more that, that I've been, that's, that's lost, that don't know what's going on. I will do it. <clears throat> okay, so I got to get on, on over here. We got to get into Hebrews. Oh, and then uh, verse 22, I will rescue my flock and they will no longer be abused. I will judge between one animal of the flock and another. I will set over them one shepherd, my servant, David. I will be, and I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant will be the prince among them, my people. I, the Lord, have spoken. That's awesome. It's absolutely awesome. And then verse 25, I will make a covenant of peace with my people and drive away the dangerous animals from the land. Now, this covenant of peace is more than the absence of hostility or tension. It speaks of harmony, of wholeness, of fulfillment, people being at peace with God in their environment. So he's going to make a covenant of peace. He's going to make, bring harmony and wholeness to his people. And then he says, I will bless my people and their homes around my holy hill and the proper season, I will send the showers they need. And, and, I, and, I, and I kind of focused in on that too. And the refreshings of the spirit are often compared to a shower. So at the proper time, I will send the spirit. We get on down to the very last verse. You are my flock, the sheep of my pasture. You are my people and I am your God. I, the sovereign Lord, have spoken. This is God's assurance to his flock. And now we get to the very last chapter of Hebrews. We've been, and Hebrews have, has been absolutely packed with, with just how we're supposed to live what we're supposed to do. And now, I mean, the writer of Hebrews ends it today with, with, a, with great stuff. And I, I don't like using the word stuff because that, what is that? But I didn't, you know, there's so much in there. I don't know what else to say, but he, he points out a whole lot of stuff, stuff. There we go again, through this, every, every verse and you know what, it, all we can do is read it over and over and over and just let every bit of it soak in. Now it says, keep on loving each other as brothers and sisters. So love, we, we, we know that there's four words in the ancient Greek language translating love. Philadelphia, philo, that's brotherly love. That's what we're talking about here is brotherly love. Keep on loving each other as brothers and sisters, which is, is basically telling you 
to be friendly. You know, don't just ignore people. I, you know, I, I think if somebody doesn't speak to me, what did I do to make them mad at me? Or, you know what, maybe they're shy. Maybe they're, they're not one just to walk up and say, hi, I'm Debbie from Oklahoma. What's your name? My grandkids say I do that a lot. There's Eros love. That's the erotic love. There's storage, which is family love, like a parent child. And agape, which is the most powerful one that that's describing God's love for us. So this isn't telling you to have an erotic love, a storage love, or agape love. It just is telling you to have brotherly love and be kind to people. Let them know they're accepted. You don't have to love what they do. You don't just because you love them, it doesn't mean you accept their lifestyle. It means you love them. It says, don't forget to show hostility, hostility, oh my gosh, hospitality to strangers. For who, for some who have done this is entertained angels. How cool is that? If you've got a story about that, post that. We love to hear where somebody entertained an angel. Remember those in prison as if you were there yourself. You know, and, and so probably at this writing, he may, he may have been talking about the, the, uh, the people that were spreading God's word, the Christians that were in prison because of doing that. Remember them. And then verse four, it talks about giving honor to marriage and remain faithful. You know, maybe, maybe, maybe you didn't honor marriage at one point in time but you know what there's a new day and there's a new heart and just because something happened at one point in time doesn't mean that's who you are today god will judge people who are immoral but you know what if you've been forgiven then those that's that's in the past it talks about in five don't love money well we use money but we don't let that become an idol we, 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 we're sh we should be satisfied with what we have. Don't just buy something because the neighbors have got something new and shiny and it's the best ever and, and you want one too. So that's, a, that's a tough cliff to fall off of. But it says he's, he's going to take care of us. I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. The Lord is my help, helper. So I will have no fear, no fear whatsoever. Good morning, Tracy. <clears throat> so then in verse seven, remember your leaders who taught you the word of God. Think of all the good that has come from their lives and follow their example of faith. You know, this is, this is a good time to, to, uh, as and it sh we should do it all the time is pray for your spiritual leaders, your pastors, the pastors' wives, everybody that's affiliated with your church, the church staff. They need they need your prayers too. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Whatever you see and read that he did in the New Testament, that's that's him. That is him. What you read is, is what he is. Don't be attracted to, to strange new ideas. See, that's a problem that we have right now because, you know, everybody is thinking outside of their moral box. And, oh, man, this is, this is a new, better way to do something. Let's, let's, you know, let's do this or that. There's so many things I couldn't even begin to name them. But go back to the word and see what God says about it. We're going to jump on down to uh, verse 15. Therefore, let us offer through Jesus a continual sacrifice of praise. Did you wake up this morning praising him? You can pray. You can sing praises anywhere. Can't you, Jan? That. It, it makes him happy. It pleases him. It's like this pleasant aroma whenever you're praising him. Obey your spiritual leaders. 
and do what they say. Their, their work is to watch over you. See how simple this is. This is the reading. You don't even have to elaborate on anything because it, it today's is just so, so, so soothing. Pray for us. This is the prayer request for the leaders. Our conscience is clear that we live honorably in everything we do and especially pray that I will be able to come back to you soon. Then in 20 through 21, a blessing is pronounced. And it's in, it says, now may the God of peace who brought you up from the dead, our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, makes you think of Psalms 23 again, and ratified eternal covenant with his blood. May he equip you with all you need for doing his will. May he equip you. It sounds like the Lord's prayer in, in doing his will. And then the very end, I got to go on down to it. Uh, in 24, greet all the leaders and all the believers there. See, see, be friendly. Walk up to them. Let them know that you appreciate them. The believers from Italy send your uh, greetings. And then 25, may God's grace be with you all. He wraps it all up there. So what an end to a book that documents the passing of the old covenant to the new covenant. Uh, Hebrews, the whole book of Hebrews is a call to Christian maturity. And that's why we read this. That's why whenever we're getting, you know, this time of year, like I said the other day, we're getting ready to have family and friends come into our house for the holidays. And, and you know what? Let's, let's, let's get our, let's get our Hebrews going here. So we can, we can greet every person that walks through the door, like, like this is a lot that like God wants you to do. Now then we're going on to Psalms 115 and the whole chapter there. And I'm going to tie it into Proverbs 27 today. And back to Hebrews 13, 21. This is this, this was so good. Not to us, Lord, not to us, but to your name goes all the glory for your unfailing love and faithfulness. So who gets the credit if God answers your prayer? Not to us, Lord, not to us but to your name goes all the glory. What's in your heart? Your accomplishment or God's glory? Look over at Proverbs 27, 21 through 22. It says, fire tests the purity of silver and gold, but a person is tested by being praised. Rick Warren wrote uh, Purpose Driven Life. And and this is a new version of it right here. But in, in the beginning of this, he starts by saying, it's not about you. It's not about you. Focusing on ourselves will never reveal our life's purpose. Do you give God all the glory? What's your Facebook posts look like? When you put stuff on Facebook, are you putting it just merely so you can see how many likes you get? Are you, is, it, is it an internal look at me and see what I've done? Or is it to look at God and see how he's brought all of this together? Look how he has, has elevated everything about my business, about my my situation that I was in it says on verse three our God is the in the heavens our God is in the heavens and he does as he wishes so no one can stand in God's way not even that enemy not compulsion circumstance that is seeking to take you down, nothing can thwart God's plan. He does whatever he wishes. 
Are you giving him the glory for something? You know, if it's too big for you to do on your own and, and he worked it out for you, are you, are you portraying that you did it on your own, that you're a self-made person? There's no self-made people. Somebody made you. And we're talking about that somebody right now. Psalms 118 or 115 through 118, it was traditionally sung at the Passover meal, commemorating Israel's escape from slavery in Egypt. And you'd see that in Exodus 11 and 12. Um, in verse five, it says they have mouths but cannot speak and eyes that cannot see. They have ears but cannot hear and noses that cannot smell. They have hands that cannot feel and feet that cannot walk and throats but cannot make a sound. And those who make idols are just like them. And all, as all, as are all who trust in him, trust. I underline trust because we have to be reminded of that today. When, and again, when we're, when we're looking at the chaos in the, with our government or with another, another bomb going into Ukraine or Poland and we're thinking, oh my goodness, what's going on with all of this stuff? It's out of our control, right? Our control is, is getting down on our knees and praying. Oh, Israel, trust Lord, the Lord. He is your helper and your shield. Oh, priest, descendants of Aaron, trust the Lord. He is your helper and your shield. We trust the Lord. All you who fear the Lord, trust the Lord. He is your helper and your shield. When you feel like that the arrows are coming at you today, this says he's your helper and your shield. Trust, trust, trust. Can you trust him with everything? It tells if you do. Verse 12, he remembers us and he will bless us. He will bless the people. He will bless those who fear him. May the Lord richly bless both you and your children. Step back and look and just meditate for a while and see what he's done in your life. Are you giving him the glory? Do you trust him for another day? What has he blessed you with this day? Maybe he blessed you with a new friend today. It doesn't have to be a, a financial blessing. It can be blessing you with, with, with something that you hadn't even thought of. Maybe a new aroma. Maybe somebody brought you some cookies. You were blessed. You smelled all of that. Verse 18, but we can praise the Lord both now and forever. We can and we should praise the Lord both now and forever. In whatever, if you are if you are sitting home sick today, you because you can't go to work, find something to do today that you can praise him for. Maybe it is is just a, because you're there all by yourself. It's a moment of quiet. It's peace. It's a time that you can you can pick up your Bible and you can read a little bit. Praise the Lord today. This is the best day ever to do it. A Wednesday. November 16th, praise him and, and seek his will. His will is so much better than mine because I don't, I don't know. I don't know what uh, I should do. What I would like to do is, you know, is it in his will? And you know what? If it's in his will, he's going to make it work out because this word tells me so. I trust him. And so I'm so glad that you joined me today. You have a wonderful rest of the day and Elizabeth should be back tomorrow. And so I love y'all and have a great one. Take care. Bye-bye.